And it's going to create there for Sons of the American Legion Radio. Army wins its second game of the year, 37-7 to over Louisiana Monroe, a game that Army got off to a 14 to nothing lead, uh, a touchdown five yards by the quarterback Christian Anderson, then a two-yard run by Sandy McCoy. But then it looked like Army was cruising, but then their offense stalled, and uh, – uh, Louisiana Monroe scored on a six-yard play. Uh, Malik Jackson passed from their quarterback, Colby Suits, and that made it 14-7. to And towards the end of the first half, a, uh, uh, Jamel Jones went in at quarterback uh, for Army and uh, was able to connect with Isaiah Alston on a 29-yard uh, reception. Uh, Army's only completion of the game, but it set up a field goal 40 yards by Landon Sawyers with just two seconds left. So Army went into the locker room at the half of the 17-7 lead. Uh, coming out in the second half, Army's offense stalled um, uh, twice. But then on the uh, second punt of the second half, Army decided to go for a fake. They did a direct snap to one of the blockers, who is normally a linebacker, Wilson Coteau. He, found, he caught the ball, found a hole, moving to his left, ran down the sidelines, and uh, gave Army a, uh, a uh, first down, 47-yard run uh, by uh, Wilson Coteau. I think that was the longest run for Army of the game. And that set up a, uh, a touchdown by Christian Anderson, a six-yard run. And then in the, se- and then in the third quarter, uh, Jacoby Buchanan, the 260-pound fullback, made uh, two plays, uh, one a 25-yard run for a touchdown uh, that gave Army a 30-7 to lead. And then uh, soon after, the next drive uh, broke free for a 40-yard run. And that's not what you expect a fullback to do to make a 40-yard gain for you. But uh, he was able to complete that uh, touchdown run. Uh, Quinn Mar- Moretzky uh, kicked that point after a touchdown. Uh, Landon Sawyers, had, who had the field goal, kicked uh, Four point after touchdowns in the game for Army. And uh, so they'll let the freshman uh, Moretzky uh, kick the final one of the day, get some experience. So Army comes away with a 37 to 7 win. Uh, notable for Army was uh, 436 yards of rushing. Uh, not too often you get over 400 yards rushing in a game. And that was led by uh, Jacoby Buchanan with 106 yards and two touchdowns. Christian Anderson, the quarterback, 102 yards rushing, 21. He did take a, 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 a tough hit in the second quarter, went out uh, for a period, but came back to play the start of the third quarter. Sandy McCoy, 47 yards uh, uh, on 10 carries and a touchdown. Uh, Cade Barnard, uh, fullback, also 44 yards on four carries. That's not bad, 11 yards a carry. And uh, Anthony Atkins had five carries for 20 yards and four yards an opportunity. Uh, Got to mention Artis Hobbs. He had 18 yards on two carries today. And uh, uh, held in check uh, a little bit was Tyrell Robinson, the freshman who had 94 yards last week. He was held to 26. It looked like the defense was really keying on the, the slot backs today. And Coach Munkin uh, talked to that in the post game that it was game really where the open uh, fullback dive play was left open uh, in some cases. Uh, Army only won a completion today, that by Jamel Jones to Isaiah Alston for 29 yards. uh, That set up a field goal at the end of the first half. Good day for Zach Harding. He doesn't punt a lot, but uh, he he kicked twice um, for a 45-yard average, had a 54-yard punt, and that helped. And uh, uh, so uh, Quinn... Martetsky got one kickoff along with Sandin uh, Sawyers. And uh, so a good day for the Army uh, offense on defense. A lot of key uh, contributors, uh, Nolan Cockrell, the nose tackle, had six tackles uh, and one for a loss uh, of four yards. John Radican, the senior linebacker, had another strong game, six tackles and uh, uh, two and a half uh, for a 17-yard loss. He was part of a, a big tackle uh, a sack at the end of the first half that prevented uh, Louisiana Monroe from either scoring or having a short field goal attempt. It ended up being a longer field attempt that was, field goal attempt that was blocked. So Nolan 
Cockrell really making his presence felt, uh, a player Coach Munkin talks about quite often. John Radican, we said, uh, six tackles. Cedric Cunningham, we talked to this week, at six tackles. Uh, Julian McDuffie, we also talked to this week, at five tackles. Uh, the junior, Eric Smith, the junior, uh, five tackles as well. And uh, Markel Broughton had uh, five tackles. He also had a, a couple of plays on turnovers. Markel had a, a fumble recovery in the third quarter and an interception in the fourth quarter. So um, Coach Munkin said that he really played a very strong game uh, today for uh, the Army defense. Uh, Kobana Bonzu um, had a sack uh, that helped. Uh, on that. He was part, he got an assist on that uh, that tackle uh, by Radigan, uh, the sack that uh, created the long field goal opportunity uh, that was ended up being blocked. And Wilson Coteau, uh, when he wasn't running the ball, he had three tackles today. Uh, Coach Munkin talked in the post game about what a good special teams player he is, and he had a lot of confidence in uh, uh, directing the ball uh, to him on that uh, direct. Uh, snap at the start early in the third quarter when Army was starting to look a little bit listless on offense. Uh, Louisiana Monroe was starting to get confidence on offense and defense. Uh, they, were, they were stopping the pitch play, but uh, Coach Munka knew uh, uh, when to call that special play. Uh, it worked, and it really uh, lit a spark under the rest of the Army team for uh, the balance of today's game. And maybe we'll see if we can meet Wilson Coteau. He was in the post game. We had a chance to chat with him uh, today. Uh, one, a, a player just contributes a lot by his presence. Uh, 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 so Army um, again uh, a win, 37 to seven over Louisiana Monroe. They go to two and zero on the season, which is where you want to be, and uh, certainly with two home games. Uh, but now the challenge. They have one of the best teams in the country coming in next week. Uh, Brigham Young University, a team that won the national championship within uh, uh, my era of watching college football to ways. But it's you know when you uh, you remember that year when they went undefeated and uh, and went, were given part of the national championship and uh, before the playoff system uh, was in effect. And uh, this is going to be the biggest home game here. It reminds me of when Stanford came in uh, seven eight years ago. Uh, John Elway was on the sideline, and Stanford was a top-10 team. Uh, the place was full. Uh, the wings of the stadium had people dressed in red because Stanford uh, uh, made a big deal of their visit, as you can imagine. All the East Coast alumni were here. A real buzz in the stadium. And Army played very well. It was close into the fourth quarter against a very good Stanford team. Challenge was Army took a bunch of injuries that game, and, they did, and it was kind of a hangover uh, when they lost to Wake Forest the next week. So I uh, know, uh, and Army's got the challenge, two very strong opponents back-to-back. -back. After BYU here, they'll play their first road game of the year out at the University of Cincinnati, a team that is trying those articles in paper that they would like to become a Power Five me uh, conference member. And uh, a very strong program. They just uh, rebuilt their stadium, I understand. Uh, we're going to see if we can get out there for that game. We're, we'll start working on that, checking all the all the requirements. But uh, uh, everyone's got to be very pleased here. Uh, the team has played well in two games, and uh, they've showed depth in the roster. Uh, the sophomore class has played very well. The uh, fullback position is, re is reestablished as the cornerstone of the team. The offensive line is playing well. Doesn't appear there have been any injuries. They have a good new center um, in uh, Connor Bishop. Uh, Maybe we'll hear more about his play from the coach on Tuesday in his press conference. Uh, defense, again, a lot of players. Uh, Cedric Cunningham played well. Mar Markel uh, Broughton played well today. Uh, Julian McDuff, who we talked to this week, and uh, the, the defensive line. Uh, it's interesting. The linebackers are not uh, really making the bulk of the tackles now like they did uh, kind of in the uh, when Cole Christensen uh, was here. And... Uh, and also with um, uh, James Nautical and uh, some of the other great linebackers. It seemed like every, the plays were all designed for the linebackers to make the tackles. But now uh, the tackles seem to be spread uh, really across the team, and that may reflect the uh, coaching philosophy of Nate Woody 
and Coach Munkin uh, seems very pleased uh, with how the defense looks so far. And special teams are making plays. Um, uh, today got a field goal, and uh, they, uh, they made a special teams play to make a first down on the direct snap. Um, so across the, the roster, um, it looks good. They, as Coach Munkin said, they have things to work on. But they have the challenge of playing one of the best teams in college football uh, this year. And this looks like not just an average BYU team, but a very good BYU team that, uh, that took Navy apart 55-7 uh, to 7 Monday night. We all saw that. We all were stunned at, at uh, you know, Navy, uh, you know, took a different approach to, to preparing for this even uh, without tackling in practice. And uh, uh, it seemed like they were not quite ready. Uh, although we have great respect for Coach Kennedy and Matt Alolo. I moved on him, and he's good, been very good to us. But uh, it was a surprise. But uh, it's going to be an interesting one uh, here next Saturday. It's on the big CBS, as they say, CBS Television Network. Uh, so it's going to get a lot of visibility. Uh, 3.30 start, I believe it is. We'll, we'll double-check that. Uh, so a lot of people will be watching the game here next week. So... Uh, well, it's, it's going to be a statement opportunity for Army to see if they can beat one of the top 25 teams in the country uh, here next Saturday. So uh, I would just like to thank a couple of our sponsors, the Westchester Bank, John Tolmer and his team. And uh, uh, call them they, uh, with any banking product need. And if you're a veteran, call and ask for the CEO. They will take, uh, John Tolmer will take uh, personal care of you. Uh, great team. It's uh, been with us uh, three, four years, and we really appreciate it. They did a great job taking care of small businesses uh, with uh, the PPP loan program. And uh, so if uh, you're a small business and need help in the Westchester area, uh, call the Westchester Bank, John Tolmer. Their uh, headquarters is in White Plains, and they'd be glad to talk with you. And uh, also, uh, Patty Devine uh, has been helping us with our technical uh improvements on our Facebook page. Uh, we, no, we notice it already. Uh, she also teaches at Sunny, SUNY uh, New Pulse, but is an expert at, uh, at uh, placing ads for Facebook pages, which is what she's helping us with, and it's uh, made a difference already. And uh, we'll have her uh, contact information here. So uh, we also always want to thank the American Legion, who we represent, and the two million veterans and the 350,000 members of our organization, the Sons of the American Legion, and also our friends at the affiliated organization, the American Legion Auxiliary, and the American Legion uh, Writers uh, Association, uh, all taking, all serving America's veterans. And we like to say uh, the two million veterans of the American Legion, a lot of them were in the U.S. Army. So, uh, for Sons of the American Legion Radio, uh, that's it from West Point. Army wins its second game of the year, 37-7, over Louisiana Monroe. The challenge of BYU uh, comes up next week. So, uh, this is Ken Kreitzer. Have a great night, everybody.